Okay, we're finally in Chapter 7, Problem Solving and Algorithms. The last few chapters we have seen uh, more of a hardware type of layer issues with gates and circuits and uh, computing components, etc., etc., and then later on, we have done a few of the low-level programming languages and pseudocode like machine code, etc. Stuff that has been of interest for computer engineers. But now we start with algorithms and programs and solving real problems using computers, which is more of a computer science and software engineering uh, type of, of issues. So, specifically about this chapter, I'm not going to cover everything that is in this video lecture about what is in that chapter, but I'll be covering sorting, which is one of the main problems solved with programs and computers to today. Um, and I'm going to explain a few of the sorting algorithms, how they work, and I'm going to also give you some examples of those sorting algorithms because um, they will be in the quiz. So let's talk about, about the concept of sorting. So sorting is arranging items in a collection so that they are ordered or they are sorted in a specific way. Um, and the way is defined by the sort key or the field on which the ordering is based on. And the sorting algorithms are the, the programs, the, the algorithms that order those items in a collection based on that sort key. Now, I don't think I have to explain why sorting is important. Many of you guys have used cell phones with your own uh, contacts and have used uh, uh, devices where you can store pictures. And imagine if you couldn't sort those contacts, phone numbers, or pictures, photos that you have in your devices, then it will be really cumbersome to try to find anything in, in them. So sorting is probably one of the most commonly used um, algorithms in computers today. Let's <clears throat> go through the first one of them, which is called the selection sort. So given a list of names, we put them in alphabetical order, right? That's the idea about the sort. So the way that we go about doing that is we find the name that comes first in the alphabet and write it on a second sheet of paper. Then we cross out the name on the original list and we continue this cycle until all the names in the original list have been crossed out and written onto the second list, at which point the second list contains the same items but in a in a sorted way. <clears throat> a slight adjustment to this manual approach does away with the need to duplicate uh, with the need to duplicate space. So imagine that you want to do the sorting, the selection sorting within the same page. So as you cross a name off the original list, a free space opens up. So instead of writing the value found <clears throat> on a second piece of uh, a paper or a second list, you exchange it with the value currently in the position where the crossed off item should go. So basically what it's called in programming terms, you swap them. And so we're going to go through an example of how to sort an array called items of items of zero through items of four. In other words, five items of names. And this A is the original array unsorted of names. 
So in the selection sort, the first thing we do is we go through the list and find the smallest of, of them all. So we assume that Sue being the first is going to be the smallest one. Then we compare with Cora and we find out, no, Cora is actually the smallest one. And then we go and compare it with Beth and we find, oh, wait a minute, Beth is the smallest one. And then we compare it to Anne and say, no, but Anne is the smallest one now. And then we compare it with June and Anne still the smallest one. So what we do is we end up swapping Anne with Sue. So Anne takes the place of Sue and Sue takes the place of Anne. And now we have a partially sorted array. Only the first element. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And then we continue on with the rest of the items in the array. So we assume that Cora is the next uh, smallest one. And then we compare with Beth and we say, no, Beth is this next one. And then we compare with Sue and then with June and we find out, no, Beth is the smallest one. So we swap Beth with Cora and we end up with stage Z. And so on and so forth until the entire array is sorted. And it's called selection sort because you select the smallest one and you start building down the array in a sort of way. Now let's talk about another sorting algorithm called the bubble sort. Bubble sort, sort uses sort of a, the same strategy as in, in <clears throat> selection sort because it finds the next item and put it into its proper place but it uses a different scheme in other words a different um, approach to finding the next item. So Instead of starting with the first one, it starts with the last list element in the array and compares it to successive pairs of elements, swapping them whenever the bottom element of the pair is smaller than the one above it. So let's see an example of it. So this is again a list of names in a five element array. <clears throat> and so bubble sort starts with the last one. So we start with Bob and we say, okay, is Bob smaller than Jim? Yes, it is. So we swap immediately Jim and Bob. And then we ask, is Bob smaller than John? Yes, it is. So we then we swap Bob and John. And then we ask, is Bob smaller than Al? No, it isn't. So Al stays there and Bob stays there but we're not done with the entire list we're at this point so we ask is Al smaller than Phil and the answer is yes so we swap Al and Phil and this is the end of the first iteration we don't have a completely sorted array but we know that we have the smallest of them all up here. We can think of it as bubbles going in a lake or in a, in a glass of water from the bottom to the top until the smallest one pops out of from, from the top. And then in the remaining iterations, for instance, we go again from the last one. Jim and John are switched. And then <clears throat> um, Bob and Jim are not switched so Bob is the next one smallest and then between Bob and Phil Bob is the smallest one so we swap Bob and Phil and we end up with <clears throat> this iteration where we have Al, Bob, Phil, Jim and John and we continue to do it until we have sorted the entire array. So remember, this one is called bubble sort because it simulates what bubbles do inside a liquid.
to just bubble up. There's another algorithm called insertion sort. And if you have only one item in the array, then it's very simple. It's already sorted, right? But if you have two items in the array, you can compare them and swap them if necessary, sorting the first two with respect to themselves. So that's pretty simple. Now, what if you have a three item array? You take the third item and put it into its place relative to the first two. So an insertion sort, pretty much what you're doing is you're inserting the item of the array in its proper place in the array. So let's see how that will work. So the item being added to the sorted portion can be bubbled up. Sort of like what bubble sort did, but we start from, from the top. So we assume that fill is already sorted. And then we go on to the next one. The next one is John. So we compare Phil and John. John is less than Phil. So we swap them. Then we on to the next one, Al. Al and Phil, Al is lower than Phil. So we swap them and we end up with John, Al and Phil. And then Al is lower than John. So we end up swapping Al and John. So the, the end of the third iteration will be Al, John and Phil. And we continue doing the same thing, basically swapping, going to the next element that is not sorted, and swapping them in the right place, finding the right place for it. Everybody else has to move around. That's why we do all those swappings until we find the right place for that item in the array. So it's very similar to bubble sort, but 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 it's not coming from the bottom to the top like bubbles. It's actually inserting the element in the right place of the array. And then finally another sorting algorithm covered by chapter 7 in the book it's quick sort. Quick sort <clears throat> um, uses the divide and conquer principle, which means if you try to sort a big array, then you will be able to do it much more efficiently if you just break that array in two and try to sort its two pieces, which are smaller than the original piece. And then you keep doing that in a recursively way. That's why you gotta understand the concepts about recursion. What is recursion? Which is the ability as a subprogram to call itself. That's the principle of recursion. And we have two cases. The base case, which is the case to which we have an answer of, is the smallest case, the, the, the really simple case that can be solved easily. And then the general case, which is the case that expresses the solution in terms of a call to itself with a smaller version of the problem. So in the case of quicksort, if we have an array of names between A and Z, what we can do is we, take, we can take those names and split them in two lists, the names that fall between A and L group, and then names that fall in between M and Z. And then we recursively do the same thing with those lists. In other ways, in other words, we take those sublists and split them in two, and all the names that fall between A and F, for instance, will go in here, and all the names that fall between G and L will fall in here until we get to a list of only one element, which will be the base case. A one element it's already sorted is itself <clears throat> and then we build up all the way back to the original list so let's see an example of quick sort
Um, so in this case, for instance, this is the um, the initial stage of the array. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight element array with eight integers. And we want to be able to sort them. So what we do is we have as the first value as the split element. It's called a split value. So what we're going to do is we are going to go with two counters, the left counter and the right counter. The right counter will go from the top to the bottom of the array, and the left counter will go from the left to the right of the array. And we're going to find values that are either greater or less than that first value. So in this case, left will find 20, which is bigger than 9. And then on the right, we have 11, which is also bigger than 9. So on the right, we want to find values that are smaller than 9 to be able to swap them with that value that we found here that is greater than 9. So we go on 11 is greater, 60 is greater, 8 is less than 9. So we found that 8 and 20 can be swapped. And that's exactly what we do here, 8 and 20. And then we continue looking for values greater than um, 9 on this left-hand side and less than 9 on this right-hand side in order to swap them until we meet in the middle. <clears throat> when we meet in the middle, then that's the end of the first iteration. <clears throat> and then what we do is we swap the, the first element, which is the initial value, with the right-hand side. And we end up with a sorted array. And we can do this by splitting this whole array into subarrays that go through the same iteration until we're done with with the whole array sorted. <clears throat> I'm going to show you next a really good website that actually goes through each one of these algorithms if you guys turn your web browsers into www.sorting-algorithms.com you will find a really cool website where you can simulate the sorting algorithms that we just talked about and even more there's a lot more algorithms out there some are better more efficient than others and it will show you actually how they behave given that you are, are that you are given or that you're starting to sort a random array or a nearly sorted array, or an exactly reversed to the sorted array, or a few unique values in the array. And you will see how each one of them will behave. <clears throat> and so let's just very quickly run all of them with all the randoms and nearly sorted and reverse and few unique arrays and see which one does it first, which one sorts the array first and which one ends up going last. So if you click here, you can actually restart all of them. So let's see, here they are. They're all working, trying to, this one is bubble is done. Quick sort was done very quickly. Selection is still not done. There you go. Now it's done. And so it gives you an idea how they behave um, as far as the time that they take and the approach that they take to sort an array. 
Now, all of them together, it's very confusing. So why don't we just dive into a specific one? Let's let's go into the first one that we covered, which was the I believe it was the insertion. No, it was the selection sort. So this one was the first one that we originally covered in our uh, video earlier. So let's go and select the selection sort. Now, if you guys remember, what you do is you find the first one, the slowest, the smallest one them all, and then you swap it with the first place. So let's see how this selection sort does it for a random, a nearly sorted, an exactly reversed, and a few unique arrays. Here it is. So Found this smallest one, it put it there, then the next smallest one, and then it put it there, and then the next one, etc. Until. So as you can see, in selection sort for each new element of the array of the sorted array you're navigating through the almost the entire array finding that one selection sort is probably one of the most inefficient ones it takes the longest one it takes the longest time of them all <clears throat> but it takes the exact same amount of time as for a random, as for a nearly sorted, as for a reverse, as for a few unique array. That's one of the characteristics of the selection sort. How about if we take a look at another one? Let's take a look at our next one that we cover, which was the insertion sort, I believe. Oh, the bubble sort, I'm sorry. The next one that we covered was the bubble sort. So the bubble sort, remember, starts from the bottom of the array and it starts looking, starts uh, um, swapping the elements until you finally get the, the smallest element bubble all the way up to the first um, of the array. So let's see how it behaves with random, nearly sorted, reverse, and few unique arrays. There it is. So it's finding it. There you go. Nearly sorted. Look at that. Done almost immediately. So bubble sort behaves extremely well when the array that you're trying to sort is nearly sorted. And that's usually the case in which you have a file system that, or, or I should say, an, um, yeah, an, an array of elements that you know that it are almost sorted. They're not so bad. It doesn't behave so well with reversed, as you can see, uh, when you have an array that it's exactly reversed to the sorted. It takes a while for bubble sort to 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 sort it out <clears throat> and that's those are the characteristics of the bubble sort algorithm so now let's take a look at another one I believe the next one that we covered was insertion sort so insertion sort if you guys remember it does it very similar to um, the bubble sort but but it does it from from the top right it's not really bubbling from the bottom to the top um, and so let's let's take a look how it behaves with all these different kinds of arrays. So here it is. Again, with the nearly sorted, it did it almost immediately. It's it was really really good insertion sort. Now with random, it behaves much better than bubble. Look at that with the with the random, it's almost done. And with the few unique, actually with the few unique, which are even better. And just like bubble sort, you know, with the reverse, it just takes a while. 
you know, because he has to, I mean, if you think about it, he has to actually swap and swap and swap and continually swap until the end. But with the with the nearly sorted, it was almost immediate. And with the few unique, it was really good too. It did it really, really fast. So that was insertion sort. That's the characteristics of insertion sort. And then finally, the one that we um, covered earlier was the one that uses recursion, which is quick sort. And 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 in this website, there's two. Uh, implementations of quicksort um, and this is the one I believe that we covered in theory so let's take a look at quick sort and let's see how it behaves with all those four types of arrays so wait a minute, look at that That is really good. Oh my God! It, with the reverse, the nearly sorted and the random, it was really fast. With the few unique, it's not so good. But when with when you have an exactly reversed or a very random um, array, quick sort does it really quick. Yep, with reverse and random, it does it really quick. So, based on the knowledge that you have of the different data items that you're going to be sorting, whether they are few unique, or they are totally reversed, or random, or nearly sorted, because it's only a few of them are out of whack, then... Based on that, you decide what algorithm to use in order to uh, sort your data in the most efficient way. And that's all I have um, as an interesting fact. So I'm going to publish it on, on our uh, Moodle, the www.sorting-algorithms.com website, so you can go there and play a little bit with them. And that's it.